So we want to start some microgreens. However, we don't want to use the peat moss since we're in this apartment. So I found this cocoa core uh, that we can use as our growing medium for our microgreens. Now this could expand up to eight quarts and it's roughly under three dollars. So uh, there's other uses that you can use cocoa core. So in this video, we're going to show you different ways that you could use cocoa core. And we're going to start right now. All right, before we get into the cocoa core and getting it all uh, decompressed, some things that you want to know about this. Most of the cocoa core bricks that you see that's all compressed uh, come from countries like uh, India, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, uh, Brazil, uh, Thailand. The good thing about cocoa core, these cocoa core bricks, is one, it helps retain a lot more moisture and water uh, than peat moss, about 30%. Uh, you don't have to worry about diseases on these since it's the byproduct of the coconuts. Uh, another thing with these, they, unlike peat moss, it has a natural pH. Uh, so uh, with the peat moss, you have to ha sometimes have to add lime or something, something of that nature to raise it up the pH level. With these, it's basically all neutral. It's a great soil amendment and soil conditioner. thing about this... Uh, a thing about this coconut core is it helps retain and preserve the nutrients that you add into here. So any type of fertilizer that you add into here, since it's going to be able to retain the moisture, you're going to be able to allow the plants to pull up the nutrients that you have it in into your uh, potty mix or your your container mix or anything of that nature. And the last thing that's very good about this is. Uh, with this, it's able to hold, maintain seven times its weight once you add water. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to uh, get this all expanded. Now, the way you get this get this brick expanded is you just add water. Now, it's best that you add boiling water or hot water to help speed up the process. So from here, we're going to just add this, put this in here. We're going to fill the water up about about one third or halfway through there. We're going to add it slowly into it so that way um, you don't want to add too much water because it's easier to add water to it than it is to take water out of it. So we're going to add this brick here. We're going to cut back and start pouring some water in there. And while it is uh, expanding and able to break up, we're going to tell you different uses that you can use this cocoa core. So while this is cool and all, like I said, now we're going to talk about some of the different uses that you can use uh, this cocoa core. Now, the first main reason why we're going to use cocoa core is for microgreens, and that's one of the first uses. For the simple fact that it's able to retain a lot of moisture, at least about 30% more than peat moss, uh, so it's going to be very beneficial helping it germinate a lot faster because when you're doing microgreens you want it to stay moist but not very damp. One of the uses that you can use cocoa core. So another use that you can use cocoa core is uh, you can use it as a seed starting mix. Now for the seed starting mix you just want to use anywhere from a four part to a five part of the cocoa core and then probably like a one part vermiculite and what that vermiculite is going to do is add an extra additive to help retain the moisture. Now, what that would do is allow, allows you to not as uh, water your sea starts as often as you as you would with the peat moss. So that's another use that you can use the cocoa core for. So another use that you can use the cocoa core for is as like I said before, as a soil amendment or soil conditioner. If you're having a any, if you want to rejuvenate any of your container mixes or your garden beds, you just add this with any other different type of. Uh, 
uh, fertilizer and stuff, slow releasing fertilizer, and it will help rejuvenate your garden beds and your uh, container mixes. Uh, and one of the other advantages or that uses that you can use the cocoa core for is if you're trying to do any type of hydroponics. Uh, a lot of people are that are growing hydroponic plants or so any type of plants that you're doing starting off in there you just transplant it into your cocoa core mix and you can basically grow all your uh, aquaponics or hydroponics now for the last uh, use that you can use this co uh, cocoa core for is if you have any type of uh, reptiles the pets this would be a good bedding for them or if you're doing any type of worm farming uh, this is an awesome, awesome uh, growing medium or bedding for your worms and your composting worms because it not only helps retain the moisture, it allows the worms to move freely just as you would use as uh, uh, dirt, you know, uh, along with any type of uh, newspaper bedding and then add some used coffee grounds and some eggshells and some food waste it will be a perfect area a farm area for you using any type of composting uh, worms for it. so that's the last use that i can think of that you can uh, use the cocoa core for now if you have any suggestion that i missed that you can use the cocoa core for make sure you comment down below so that way you can help our viewers that want to use cocoa core whatever uses that they can use it as an advantage for them so now we're going to talk about some of the cost uh, advantage we did a cost comparison on the peat moss and the cocoa core and now for that brick it costs about two dollars and 97 cents to get you about eight quarts now with the peat moss it's a 1248 and that's for three cubic feet which is about 89.7 quarts. So with the cocoa core, it gives you about 27 cents per quart, where with the peat moss, it gives you about 14 cents per quart. So it's basically almost half the cost of the cocoa core. Now, the thing that peat moss has over the cocoa core is you can go to almost any big box store to find the peat moss. The, advantage, the disadvantage of with peat moss is, is, is yes it is compressed and you have to shift it out to get some of the big particles out of the uh, peat moss compared to with the cocoa core it's not as readily available as the uh, peat moss so you almost have to buy it online now the other thing with the peat moss is you don't have to uh, uh, sift it out of any big particles because it's the byproduct of a coconut the only thing that you do have to do is you have to like you saw us you have to uh, break it down by adding some water to it to have it expand the good thing uh, versus the peat moss is you don't have to water as much because it does retain a lot more moisture than it does with peat moss now we do other DIY uh, projects. Uh, we'll put a playlist above here so that way you can go and check those out. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss an upload. Until the next video, let's grow together.